Alright, so I want to talk about, ironically, silent protagonists. Regardless of your gaming history, you have most likely ran into, or at least know of, a silent protagonist. Some of the biggest icons in gaming are silent protagonists. Super Mario, often considered to be the most recognizable and popular video game character of all time, is a silent protagonist. To fully define a silent protagonist and give you an idea of what one is, a silent protagonist is a playable character who lacks any dialogue for the entire duration of a game. And yes, I did just read that definition entirely off Wikipedia. Look, I don't care what any high school English teacher says, Wikipedia is a good source. You just need to make sure to cross-reference with any other credible sources and your own existing knowledge of the topic. I've just been meaning to get that off my chest for some time now. An exception to the silent protagonist is that they are allowed to the occasional interjection or short phrase, but typically the consensus is that a silent protagonist is someone who has little to no speaking lines except for maybe a few expressions here and there. It's pretty easy to know if a protagonist is considered a silent protagonist or not, since there really isn't much of a gray area in the definition. So I feel like I sometimes have pretty unpopular opinions on things, especially when it comes to pop culture and even more specifically video games, but I felt like I was in the majority when it came to the silent protagonist. I like silent protagonists, and I thought the common opinion was that most people enjoyed them as well. Turns out people hate these things. They like a personality because they do not speak, so I cannot like the character. Like. Dude, you only play sports games and Call of Duty. You lack personality. Okay, but seriously, I do not like this argument at all. Like I said, the most recognizable and popular character in video games, Super Mario, is a silent protagonist. And there's tons of personality and charm with him. Sure, maybe in the simple 2D platformer games he may lack a bit of personality, but just look at any 3D Mario game, or any of the RPG spin-offs. Have you seen how expressive and fun Mario is in Super Mario RPG? Just because a character is silent does not mean that they are automatically unlikable and have zero personality. Now, I will say, I totally see where some of the original statement can be true, but I think it's ignorant to use such a blanket statement for all silent protagonists, since sometimes, to those characters and or video games benefit, it's good to have a silent protagonist. Originally, a lot of video games opted for a silent protagonist because, well, the technology at the time just pretty much forced them to. Having voice lines or even a bunch of text in your game took up space and it just wasn't possible for early video gaming hardware. That's why a lot of those early iconic video game characters tend to be silent. It's just become a part of who they were and even once the technology was readily available to add voices, the game designers decided to keep them silent. But besides just technology not allowing for voices, there are other reasons that you would keep your protagonist silent. Some genres just work better with the silent protagonist. Could you imagine playing through a side-scrolling platformer and the character is just talking the whole time? That would be a little weird. Off of the top of my head, I can't think of a single platformer game that has a non-silent protagonist, with one exception, Celeste. The main character Madeline, for the most part, is silent. During all of the platforming sections, she doesn't speak. The main focus of the gameplay is on the really tight platforming. Now, I haven't finished Celeste, so I could be wrong, and maybe there is some section later in the game with some dialogue in the platforming, but you get the point I'm trying to make here. There are breaks in the gameplay that doesn't only just act as a resting point for the player, but for Madeline to speak to NPCs or herself, fleshing out her character. This is a great example of how even genres that traditionally have silent protagonists can change things up and implement new ideas when it comes to the player character. But moving on, another big reason that you would want to have a silent protagonist in your video game is to allow for the player to self-insert themselves into that character. It's hard to imagine yourself as a character when they're running around talking and giving themselves their own personality. And once again, I thought I had the common opinion that self-insertion into a video game is good thing, but turns out people hate this concept as well. Basically, the idea is to keep the character as much of a blank slate as possible so that it can be easy for anyone in any walk of life to immerse themselves as that character. And no, I didn't actually read that one off Wikipedia. I'm just talking out my ass. People hate this because it does leave the character more as a blank slate, but once again, there are reasons you would want to have this in your video game. Role-playing games, or RPGs for short, make it a lot easier to, well, roleplay if you can self-insert as the character. Another genre that does this a lot is the survival game genre. I think this is because the genre focuses more on the survival aspect of the game rather than the story. I know, shocker, right? But since it is more of a focus on the gameplay rather than the main character, why not just leave them as a blank canvas for the player to immerse into? Imagine playing Minecraft and Steve just keeps rambling about how he needs to go and tend to his farms or kill the Ender Dragon. That would just be weird. Instead, Minecraft gives players a literal canvas of a character to do whatever they want with it. A perfect example of how a silent protagonist can sometimes be better than a non-silent protagonist is Subnautica. 
If you were not aware, the Subnautica series has two games in it currently, both with different storylines and playable characters. The first game features a silent protagonist and the story happens around the character as you are exploring. It is a really neat experience if you have never played Subnautica. You will just be going about your business and stumble upon something new that pushes the story forward a bit. It happens organically and does not feel forced at all. Subnautica is a survival game at the end of the day and it's a great way to go about having the story. The newest game to release, Subnautica Below Zero, opts to add more of a personality to the main character by, well, fleshing out her personality and giving her a backstory history, but most importantly to this conversation, adding voice lines. Let me just say that I think both of these games are fantastic, but I do think that the first game is a little better. By giving the character voice lines and more of a driving force in the story, the story goes more from happening around the character to happening because of the character. Now, I'm no movie director, I'm just some 21 year old talking about video games on the internet, so I have no clue what makes a good driving force for a story, but I do think that Subnautica Below Zero pushes players a little bit away from the survival aspect and more into the story because of the choice to include voice lines and make the main character more of a driving force in the story. But Subnautica is a perfect example to look at for both silent and non-silent protagonists since both games share extremely similar gameplay but with different takes on the player character, so you can go and play both of these games and decide for yourself which way you prefer. I will say however that there are definitely games that would falter a lot if they chose to have a silent protagonist. Either of the Spider-Man games for the PS4 would suffer greatly if they had silent protagonists. Having the most expansive and immersive Spider-Man game without having a Spider-Man that swings around quipping off one-liners would just be off. Something fundamental from the character would be missing. The game wouldn't be bad by any means, but the story and especially the endings of those games would not be as good as they are if they didn't have talking protagonists. Another example of this would be the modern Tomb Raider games. Lara Croft constantly talks to herself and other NPCs throughout the game, and at no point does this ever ruin the atmosphere or environment that these games set up. So, going back to the original argument that a character is bland and has no personality because they are silent, while not entirely true or fair to say, I do somewhat agree with. There are tons of games that benefit greatly from having voice acting and a well-developed character to play as. So, while I went into this topic fully planning to support and defend silent protagonists, I've actually come to the conclusion that the benefit of a silent protagonist is contextual and not conceptual. There are plenty of examples of video games with long histories of having genres with silent protagonists and giving them non-silent ones, or vice versa. I think it depends on the context of the game and what the game is aiming to accomplish with its story and main character. A game series known for having a silent protagonist is The Legend of Zelda, and I think that's a good choice to have kept him silent all these years except for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, it would have been very weird and difficult to have gone and gave Link a voice after having never had one before. No, those games don't count. So, I totally understand why they decided to keep him silent even after giving a lot of the other characters voices. It's just weird during some scenes when something emotional is going on or there is a conversation and Link is kind of just there in the background with a blank expression not really saying anything. But, like I said, I do think the choice to keep Link silent was the better choice overall. But hey, once again, I'm not a video game designer, I'm just some 21 year old on the internet, so take this all as you will.